the goal for today's lecture is to talk about manifold suboptimization suboptimization algorithm <laughs> and i want to contrast this particular algorithm with the gradient projection algorithm uh, so let me let me first talk about what the problem is so i want to minimize the function f of x such that x is in rx rn and ax is less than equal to b and this ax is less than equal to b implies that element wise a multiplied by x should be less than the corresponding element of b so let me denote a by a1 transpose am transpose or ar transpose um, so this is a vec this is a matrix in r cross n and of course b is a vector in r r okay so i have inequality constraint problem and uh, note that uh, you cannot so don't let me just make a remark here so don't change equality into two inequality constraints what i mean by that is if you have let's say a aj transpose x equals to bj it should not i mean even though it is equivalent to aj transpose greater than equal to bj and aj transpose x less than equal to bj um i'm i'm not i'm discouraging you to change an equality constraint in this way into the inequality constraint that we have here because it, it requires ax less than equal to b type constraint so a better way to do it is you have aj1 x1 plus ajn xn equals to bj this implies that xn is equal to bj minus aj1 x1 minus aj n minus 1 okay so this is not don't use this approach use this approach so substitute xn with the corresponding expression so eliminate xn completely from the uh, optimization variable and then try to solve the problem so that's the preferred approach if you want to use this manifold suboptimization method Okay, so let's say you are given a problem, minimize a function subject to some equality and inequality constraints. Um, you're going to use this sort of, this approach to eliminate all the equality constraints and transform them into a problem where you only have inequality constraints with fewer number of variables. And this is the approach you had taken in assignment one problem four. So I just want to reiterate that that particular approach of eliminating a variable is extremely important in some algorithms. Okay. Any question on this approach? Okay. So now what's the idea in this 
in the manifold suboptimization method. So let's say I have a bunch of inequality constraint. So this is my AX less than equal to B. So let me just write it. This is A1 transpose X equals to B1. And the region we are optimizing in is basically interior of this particular polygon. Okay, so this is the AX less than equal to B region. Perfect. So the idea in this particular, so, so let's contrast this with gradient projection method. So in gradient projection method, we your dk was argmin d in the set of all feasible directions at xk gradient fxk transpose d plus 1 over 2sk norm of d square Okay, this was gradient projection method. And in this particular algorithm, in manifold suboptimization algorithm, we are going to transform this particular constraint. Okay. And let's see how this constraint is. How should I say? So the so you you don't want to look at the descent direction along all possible feasible directions, so you restrict the set of feasible directions along which you want to descend in this particular method. <clears throat> okay, so at this point of time, are there any questions on, on eliminating variables? or the gradient projection algorithm. So this is what we did in the previous class. We talked about gradient projection method. And now in the manifold suboptimization method, we are going to talk about how to restrict the set of feasible directions along which we would like to descend. Okay, so let's look at the inner workings of this algorithm. So let's say this is my X naught and this is my X star. And if I wanted to use the gradient projection algorithm, I will, I can go anywhere in the set and then I can converse to the optimal solution. The idea in gradient, sorry, the idea in the manifold suboptimization method is From X naught, you will move in the direction of the edges. And as soon as you get to the edge, then you will keep sliding along the edge. Okay, so this black line is the gradient, uh, sorry, the manifold suboptimization method. And this one is the gradient projection method.
Are the differences clear between the two methods? So one method allows you to move along all possible directions, whereas the other method requires you to slide along the edges until it's time to go inside the set. Any question on this, these two algorithms? Okay. So in order to de define the detailed working of this algorithm um, and the mathematical expressions for the descent direction, I need to introduce a few notations. So A of X, this is the set of J. So this is the set of inequality constraints such that AJ transpose X is equal to BJ. Okay, so these are the set of active constraints. constraints at X. Okay, so let me redraw that polygon. One, two, three, four, five. So at this point, what are the set of active constraints? So this is this line segment is constraint one, this line segment is constraint two, three, four, five. So if you're here, constraint five is active. If you are here, constraint one is active. So here at this particular point, how many constraints are active? Two. Two. Yeah. Which are the two constraints active here? One and five. One and five, right? So at this point, two and one. So these are the set of active constraints at this particular point. So as you move uh, in the set, the number of active constraints will change. So at this point, there are no active constraints. So let me say A of X equals to null set. So there are no active constraints here, but along the edges, there are one or two or you know, in higher dimensional, you could have more number of active constraints. Then I'm going to define AK as the set of age, like, like I'm going to stack all AJ transpose as a matrix where J is A of XK. Okay, so I'm going to, let's say A1 and a5 are active, so if this is my x1, so my a1 will be a1 transpose and a5 transpose. And the third definition I want to introduce is S of XK, which is D such that AKD is equal to zero. <clears throat> so this is the set of Okay, so this is just a subspace in the set of feasible directions. Okay, so it's clear what the set of active constraints at X are. Okay, so 
uh, as you move along the edges, the set of active constraints are going to change. I can stack the set of active constraints as a matrix. Oh, I can define BK as BJ, J in AXK. Oh, but I actually, I wouldn't need BK. So let me just remove this BK stuff. I don't need BK. Um, so, so I need AK. So AK is the AJs as row vectors stacked as a matrix for all J which are active at XK. And then S of XK is the set of all descent directions such that the active constraints remain active. Okay, so I'll give you an example of this S of XK. Again, let me redraw the figure or the set. So if I'm standing here, this is my XK. My S of XK will be just these two directions. Okay, so I, I want to maintain the set of active constraints. I don't want to remove the set of active constraints. And so my S of XK would be basically going either along this side or along the other side. Those are the only two directions available here. If I look at a 3D figure, And let's say I'm here, this is my X K. Then my S of X K is basically going in all these directions, but still staying on the surface. So these are all the possible directions I can go to. Uh, but I'm not going to go interior of this, uh, what would be this called maybe a prism. So I won't go in the interior of the prism. I'll still stay on the surface of the prism. Now at this point, if this was my XK, I can only move along this direction or this direction because I don't want to again change the set of active constraints. Um, now there is a problem when you get to this point because here three constraints are active or in the upper figure, if you look at this point or if you look at this point, or this point, three constraints are act so two constraints are active, and therefore the set of active directions would be just zero. So if this is your xk, then s of xk will be just zero. Okay, so I hope that now it's clear. Um, What the what this uh, set of feasible directions, the restricted set of feasible directions would look like because we want to constrain the set of active constraints even if we move in the direction. Okay, so these are the three notations we are going to use in the. Uh, professor, yeah. Can you can you, be, uh, can you explain why the set of feasible direction is zero once again in the right corner. right great question so so let me so i'm standing at xk and i know that ak xk is equal to bk so remember i was defining bk as b bj j is in axk right so if i want to move in a direction D, but I don't want to change the set of active constraint, then my AK, XK plus D should also be equal to BK, right? Because I don't want to change the set of active constraints. I don't want less number of active constraints. I don't want more number of active constraints. So this would imply that AKD must be equal to zero. So you have equality one and you have equality two and the two equalities would imply that AKD must be equal to zero. Only then you can retain the set of active constraints after you have moved in a direction D standing at XK. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now here is the 
algorithm um, so going back to the figure i'm standing at xk and i move in the direction dk and i reach the point xk plus 1 and then i do the same thing again and i reach xk plus 2 okay so what all possibilities can happen so there are two possibilities so the first possibility is we found dk in s of xk such that dk is a descent direction which means gradient of fxk transpose dk is strictly less than zero Okay, so that's the case here at xk. I'm able to find a descent direction dk and I'm going to use some value of alpha k to get to xk plus one. You can pick Armijo's rule or whatever other favorite method you have for determining the value of alpha k. On the other hand, the second possibility is dk was equal to zero. So we actually didn't find a valid descent direction. Then there are again two possibilities. Possibility A is you remove one of the active constraints j bar and recompute dk okay that's one possibility I'm trying to look for a descent direction along the restricted set of uh, feasible directions and I find that my dk turns out to be equal to zero. And then the only option available to us is, well, you know, maybe we have too many active constraints, so let's remove one of the active constraints and then proceed with uh, finding the set of descent directions. Or the second option is you are at the stationary point. So xk is stationary. In other words, none of the feasible directions are descent directions and therefore you are at, an, at a stationary point, which means that you satisfy that particular point satisfies the necessary condition for optimality. Okay, so let's uh, look at these two possibilities in this figure. I need to move it down a little bit. Okay, so this was my XK. And at this time, I have two descent direction. One is this direction and one is this direction. So that's what my S of XK looks like. And I'm able to find a descent direction DK such that gradient of FXK transpose DK is strictly less than zero. So let's say uh, 
this was the direction at which my this is my dk direction and i use my favorite rule to pick alpha k and i end up being here which is my xk plus 1 now if you look at the set of active constraints at xk plus 1 there are two active constraints so the set of s of xk plus 1 is actually just zero because you can't move anywhere if you want to retain the two active constraints at the, the next time step. So then you have to remove one of the active constraints. Um, so let's say I'm going to remove this from my set of active constraints. So then the only active constraint here is this direction. And so I will start moving in this direction and I'll get to xk plus two. And when I get to xk plus two, I will let's say recompute the uh, so there are only two possibilities here. I can either go in this direction or I can go in the other direction. And when I recompute my DK, uh, it turns out that even if I remove the active constraints, I'm not able to move, find a feasible descent direction. So here the only active constraints are, is this particular line segment. And if I'm not able to find a descent direction along this line segment, I will start looking for descent direction along these possible directions and assuming that i'm not able to find any descent direction um, it's very much likely that xk is stationary and it's not very much likely it is it means that xk is stationary which means that it satisfies the necessary condition for optimality so now that the description of the algorithm is clear uh, what we need to still determine is how to compute my dk and how to compute this J bar, uh, which of the active constraints should I remove? Okay. And that's what we will get to um, in the next few minutes. So at this point of time, any question on the workings of this algorithm? Okay, so I hope the idea is, uh, you know, I want to re-emphasize the idea in the gradient projection method. At any point of time, you were allowed to look for all feasible directions and you were allowed to move in all feasible directions. But in this uh, gradient, in the sub manifold sub-optimization method, you're only allowed to move in along the set of active constraints. And the only time you can get away from the set of active constraints, which means you can go inside the um, set is when you remove all the set of active constraints and then you are just moving within the set itself. And then eventually you will converge to a stationary point, um, which would satisfy the first order necessary condition for optimality, for constrained optimization. Okay. Professor? Yeah. Uh, I have one doubt. Yes. Uh, like, uh... Uh, in this algorithm, like uh, we are uh, first uh, looking on the boundaries and then going inside the uh, right. set. Right. So, uh, but like, how it is uh, better than the directly like in conditional gradient method? We were directly right. searching inside. So right. How it is right. Better, but better. Right. So there is a history to this particular algorithm. So this algorithm was designed around 1950s for solving linear programming problem. And uh, let me just write it. Uh, so, so in linear program, let's say you have a linear program and you're trying to solve it over a set of this type, AX less than equal to B type. Uh, it is well known that if a solution exists, the solution must be, I mean, you would have one of the, these vertices as the solution to the optimization problem. Okay, so, so the idea at that particular time in 1950s was to go from one of the, one of the uh, vertex to another vertex. Sorry, it's not edge, but it's a vertex. This is the edge. So you have to go from one vertex to another looking for the optimal solution. So that's how this, or, this algorithm was originally conceived. And then later on, it was 
extended for arbitrary functions, uh, arbitrary non-convex functions. Uh, however, one thing that still retains true is if you are minimizing a concave function, so f is concave, okay, so a linear function is concave over ax less than equal to b, again, you are guaranteed that your solution will be at one of these vertices, or it could be at, at you know, on an edge as well. But uh, but you will have a solution at the at one of the vertex as, as well. So so that's why this algorithm still works very well. Whenever you have a concave, you are trying to minimize a concave function over ax less than equal to b type set. And so if you have a very non-convex function, um, my feeling is that gradient projection method would work better. Um, but if you have a concave function. Uh, and, and you know that the solution will be at one of the vertex, then you are better off using the manifold suboptimization method because you are guaranteed to visit that vertex if a solution exists at that vertex. Okay. okay. So for a long time, from 1950s to 1980s, uh, this was the only algorithm. Well, maybe not the only algorithm, but this was the best algorithm for solving linear programming problems. Okay, okay. Uh, Professor, and one more doubt. Just yes. uh, uh, in this, uh, we ca cannot choose any arbitrary x naught. We will have to begin with the point that lies on the boundary. If we start from but, no, point you can itself. you can you can start from a point inside the set, and you know inside the set it will start moving towards the boundary. Okay, depending on. Assuming that you have not yet hit the optimal solution, it will start moving towards the boundary. And once it hits the boundary, then it will stay on the boundary. Uh, but we won't have any active constraint when it is inside. Then that's fine. Go... That's fine. Because then you're, if you don't have any active constraints, your S of XK will actually be RN. You can move in all directions. Okay. Right. So remember your S, your S of XK is D such that AKD equals to zero. Now, if you have no active constraint, then AK is a null set and uh, all directions are feasible directions. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. All right. Okay, so now, what we are going to talk about is how do you pick DK and how do you pick J bar in this uh, algorithm? <clears throat> so first, DK is a solution to this gradient projection method, but only in the restricted set. This is basically D in SXK. So this is the submanifold, or let me just call it manifold, and this is the suboptimization. So that's how this name came about, which is manifold suboptimization method. So at every time step K, you are solving a suboptimization problem over a manifold and you're getting the value of descent direction. <clears throat> if this was gradient projection method, this D would be in, so let me just write as a comment in gradient projection, this D would be is in the set of all feasible directions. But because it's a manifold suboptimization method, I'm not looking at all feasible directions, I'm only looking at 
directions at which the set of active constraints would be preserved even if I take a step in that direction. All right. So the nice thing here, so you know, this particular set D of XK could be very, very complicated and therefore we don't like it. But S of XK is actually pretty simple. It's AKD equals to zero. And from your homework problem, um, implies that your DK is given by this expression. Sorry, the expression is a bit horrible. But uh, the good thing is it can be solved in, in closed form. Okay, so at time t, I want to find the descent, uh, sorry, at time k, I want to find the descent direction. So I have to solve an optimization problem, um, which is given here. Uh, the optimization problem has a constraint AKD equals to zero, but this constraint is pretty benign. It's an equality constraint problem. And in the homework, you will actually find out a solution to this problem, which is given by this set of expressions. So DK is, um, dependent on mu and this mu the expression for mu is given by um, this matrix inverse matrix multiplied by the gradient okay and you would have two situations one where dk is non-zero vector and one in which dk is a zero vector okay so if dk is not equal to zero then pick alpha k and proceed to to step k plus one if dk equals to zero then pick So this is one, this is two A. If DK is equal to zero, then pick J bar such that mu J bar is less than zero and define A tilde K as AJ transpose J is in SXK minus J bar. So I'm going to remove J bar from the set of active constraints. So this implies J bar removed from the set of active constraints.
Okay, now once you remove J bar from the set of active constraints, you go back and solve this optimization problem with the updated AK tilde. For one there, you say if DK does not equal zero, then pick alpha K and proceed to, what's the word after that? Uh, K plus one, the step K plus one. Okay. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't very clear. Okay, now if dk is equal to zero and mu j is greater than equal to zero for all j. Okay, so you can't find a j bar such that mu j bar is strictly less than zero. Then gradient fxk transpose x minus xk is greater than or equal to zero for all x in capital X. So you are at the stationary point. That's the entire algorithm. Uh, professor yes uh, is this a uh, 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 an algorithm in, in the homework or this is a very uh, general algorithm you just introduced so uh, what do you mean this is the algorithm in the homework so you have to code this manifold sub optimization method in the current homework so that's the fourth problem in the homework to write a code of manifold suboptimization for linear programming problem. Uh, yes, because when, when you uh, introduce this algorithm, uh, first you said when dk equals zero, uh, we just oh, we will remove one of the active constraints, but 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 uh, at that time you didn't uh, uh, introduce uh, like any special specified way to choose which active constraint Correct. to remove. Correct. And here I'm introducing a specific way of picking which active constraint to remove. So uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so my so, so my question is that uh, so so by saying manifold uh, op sub optimization algorithm uh so all, all the sorry, I mean, I mean, in manifold the sub optimization algorithm, we we will all rem, remove active constraints, uh, right? Like the way you introduced yes. here. Yes. Okay, yes. Same. Yes. Yes. So so in that respect, yes, it is a general algorithm, and this is exactly how you would remove the active constraint, and you can pick pretty much any j bar as long as mu j bar is less than zero, and that's a valid descent direction. It will lead to a valid descent direction. Okay. So there is there is quite a bit of results that you need to prove in order to show that this algorithm actually uh, behaves as it is intended to behave. So the first thing here that you need to prove is the gradient of fxk transpose dk is strictly less than zero. Uh, then the second thing you need to prove here is that when you remove the J bar from the set of active constraints and you resolve this optimization problem with updated AK tilde instead of AK, uh, you again have a descent direction, which means that gradient of FXK transpose 
d tilde k is strictly less than zero. And in the third case, when all mu j's are non-negative and dk is equal to zero, then you need to prove this result. Okay, so there are three results that are needed to be proven in order for establishing that this algorithm works according to you know, the way I have described. Uh, but these results can be proven and it's there in the book. It's a pretty, uh, I wouldn't say it's a long proof, but uh, it requires some amount of thinking. Uh, it's not obviously, it's not that obvious to get to understand all these three results. So it will require some mental effort to understand. So let me go over the description of the algorithm again. So at every time k, uh, you will solve this suboptimization problem over this manifold. And it can actually be solved in closed form and you get these set of expressions dk and mu. Uh, if dk is non-zero, you can just pick pick any alpha k according to your favorite method and then you can proceed to step k plus one. Uh, so which means that you will have xk plus one equal to xk plus alpha k dk and then you can start doing the same thing again at xk plus one. On the other hand, if you got to a point where dk is equal to zero, then you have to pick j bar such that mu j bar is less than zero. Um, and you have to remove that particular J bar from the set of active constraints and then redo the optimization. Okay, and you will again get a valid descent direction and you can start descending and continuing with the update. Uh, now at some point of time, you will reach a situation where DK is equal to zero and all the um, mu's are non-negative, which means that you are at a stationary point which satisfies the necessary condition for optimality. And uh, you have to invoke some sort of sufficient condition to certify that this point is optimal. Okay, that's the overall algorithm in manifold suboptimization method. Um, that's it for this class. I'm gonna stick around for questions on this algorithm um, and uh, uh, and after this class, uh, after 15 minutes or so, I'll be available for office hours if you want to discuss anything else. Professor, uh, I yes. have one doubt. Yes. Uh, right. In, in the whole algorithm that we have, uh, the steps that we have seen, we'll always be moving along the boundaries, I suppose. Correct. So, like, how will, if the our optimal point is inside the bound, uh, is in, in the region, how That's will it go inside uh, that, like, so, so look at this black curve. So initially you are descending along whatever direction is a descent direction. When you hit the boundary, you are going along the boundary. And at one point of time, you will re reach a situation where DK is equal to zero and mu is less than zero. Okay. So you'll have only one. So in this case, you have only one active constraint. Yes. And at that time, mu is less than zero. So you basically remove that constraint completely from your set of active constraint. And then you can allow, you, you, you are now allowed to move inside the set. Your a, K, your a of xk would become null set. So there are no active constraints when you remove the only active constraint at that time, at that point. Okay, so if there are no active constraints, then we can have all the directions. Uh, Right, we, all the feasible uh, directions are available for you to move in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah. So, so you know, let me just zoom in. So this is the, so you are, you are here at XK. This is your X star. And at this point, you have only one constraint, A3 transpose XK equals to B3. This is the only constraint you have. And what will turn out, suppose X star is sort of inside the set, then it will turn out that your mu will be less than zero. And you have only one constraint. So you have to remove that from the set of active constraints. And then you are free to move inside. Because now you are not constrained to slide along this edge. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Sure.
any other question i have, I have yeah. a question about the project um uh, can the, can i take um, that in office hours or is it a quick yeah. question or well i i was going to ask if you wanted me to ask now or wait for office hours uh i mean i would but prefer I, to wait for the office hours okay, okay. sounds good yeah All right, so I'll see you yes, guys. Sir. Yeah, any question? Uh, yes, I have, a, uh, I have a question regarding the homework. Uh, yes. So can I discuss it in the uh, office hours? Yeah, I'm guessing the homework problems are also going to be detailed problems. So we'll. I'm just taking some quick questions on the on this topic that I've taught or any other quick question on the homework, like clarification question or something. Uh, no, I, like it's related to, uh, like I need, I'm not understanding something, so. Okay, then we'll meet like, at the little office. Detail. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys in 10, 15 minutes after the video gets downloaded.